Let's see if we can't find some crabs and make them jump off ledges today. See them? There's one right there. Oh, there he goes. Ah, we got him. Just like that. Did I ever tell you the story of when I locked myself out of my car in Japan? One beautiful morning, I went about my daily routine, waking up, working out, making breakfast, and getting ready for work. It was a sunny day, the birds were chirping, the kind neighbor grandmother was plucking away at her garden. It wasn't quite summer, so the temperature was cool and pleasant. A perfect day. Until I walked to my car, took my keys out of my pocket, pushed the unlock button, and nothing happened. Surprised, I pushed the unlock button a few more times, but my car refused to open. Not panicking yet, but slightly annoyed. There is a physical key attached to my remote. I inserted the key and opened my car. Whew, I thought, disaster averted. Oh, I was but a sweet summer child. I had my suspicions that something wasn't quite right when my car's four-way flashers started blinking like a bomb about to explode. Unhurried, I sat in my seat, inserted the key into the steering block, and turned. Nothing happened. It refused to turn without my key remote having a battery. Then, my car alarm started going off. So, it's worth mentioning at this point in the story, I park literally right next to the police station. Panicked, I tried to start my car again, but it refused to start. Instead, I shut the door and locked my car. Mercifully, that did the trick. The alarm stopped, but now I was locked in my car and I couldn't drive it. A lot of good that would do me. I unlocked my car, opened the car door, and the four-way flashers began blinking their evil warning of an alarm soon to come. I locked and shut the door again, without me inside. But the car alarm rang out regardless, blasting and signaling my stupidity to all of Japan. And this time, the alarm didn't stop. I went back to my house, frantically googling how to replace car key batteries. First, I would have to perform open heart surgery on my car remote to open it. Then, I would need a very specific and small battery to recharge the remote. This would require a trip to the local convenience store which would normally require my car. The car option was obviously off the table, meaning I would have to bike there. With my blaring car alarm echoing throughout the otherwise quiet Japanese town, I grabbed my bike, wearing my dress pants, shirt, and tie, and trekked to the local store. Fifteen minutes later, I arrived. I didn't know the specific battery type my remote needed, but I saw the section with the various batteries and bought several of different sizes, praying I had bought the right one. I should have known that luck wasn't on my side. I biked back, grabbed a dull butter knife, and spent the better part of an hour cranking open my car remote. At last, I pried it open like an oyster, took out the battery, and I found out, to my great dismay, that of all the batteries I bought, I had failed to buy the correct size. Are you kidding me? I would once again make the long journey out to the convenience store. Here we go again. Upon my exasperated return, I inserted the correct battery, snapped the remote shut, and returned to my car, which had stopped honking at some point in this escapade. I pushed the unlock button. To my great relief, it worked, and I got inside and turned the key starting my car and ending its reign of terror and misery upon me and the local Japanese populace. Through all that chaos, police officers never confronted me about what was happening, which is kind of amazing. There is no moral to the story except that Japanese cars hate me. Teaching English as a third year JET participant, I have begun to feel stagnant in the classroom and the office. I am no longer a newbie who is learning the ropes of Japan and ALT life, and I spent my second year honing my teaching strategies, games, English board, and student and teacher relationships. Now I feel as if I have finished most of my growing, and it's time to look for a different professional opportunity. 
Working with Japanese English teachers whose goal is to help students have fun and pass exams is great, but these teachers are also juggling dozens of other responsibilities, meaning planning lessons and collaborating with an ALT is not always a top priority. This is where I, as the ALT, take initiative, pre-plan games and activities and have these prepared, and try to make time and space in lessons for myself. This is my current strategy, as forcing the time to plan extensively with my JTEs would be detrimental to them. If I was to plan for longer periods with my teachers, the benefits would be that English classes might be more enthusiastic and entertaining, but it would take a take it would take away time they are using for planning their homeroom lessons and other such responsibilities, and it would set them back. However, a good compromise is my current role, that I plan for a short portion of class time that is enthusiastic, 5 or 10 minutes, and the rest of class is dedicated to classwork. It's the most reasonable compromise to balance both in and out of classroom at a busy school like mine. This is a bit of an aside, but the real value of an ALT is not necessarily English teaching capability. Well, that's great. It's how the ALT shares their culture that gives their position value. In the acronym JET, Japanese Exchange and Teaching, exchange comes first, and I think for a good reason. English won't do Japanese students much good if they're not open-minded to find a use for it. Opening the minds and hearts of Japanese students through cultural exchange should always be the priority. Could a Japanese teacher do this? I think they can, but an LT is living, breathing inspiration for travel, language, learning, and multiculturalism. It's a good opportunity for real human cultural exchange, which is something a Japanese teacher alone could not replicate. So it's unfortunate when LTs aren't given the time to showcase their culture. It defeats half of the purpose of being on JET. Thankfully, exchange is a two-way street, and you can exchange culture by immersing yourself in Japanese customs. When I go running early in the morning, I often see other early risers who are out walking, walking their dogs, fishing, or even running like me. One interesting character is a high-energy Japanese grandmother who I've encountered several times. The first time I encountered her, I was doing my morning run and she told me in Japanese, Definitely keep going. I'm 80 years old and I'm still going. You are young. Don't stop. Since that encounter, I've seen her many mornings around town. She's appeared out of random house windows as I ran past and yelled good morning to me. Sometimes I'll pass her as I'm running down the street and she'll yell good morning to me. Or if the weather is nice, she'll yell that the weather is nice to me. It's funny and it makes my day better whenever I see her and feel her positive attitude. There are also random encounters in the morning I do not enjoy. One such person is a man I call Dog Man. Of all the villains in the Bulbasan universe, such as the dreaded Licking Man, Dog Man joins the ranks of my arch nemesis. But it's not him that's the diabolical mastermind, it's his dog. Every morning, he walks his dog along the path I run, and if we happen to encounter each other, his dog will sit quietly and assess me, and when I get close enough, it will go ballistic, barking and snarling and lunging. I think the dog does this to everyone, as in the morning sometimes I can hear it barking and carrying on in the distance. Also, even when the dog is done walking, its villainous rampage cannot be quenched. When the dog is put back in its house, it will slam the window and bark at people walking along the path past the house. Usually I make a couple laps past Dogman in the morning, and every time I do, I wait for the dog to jump scare me as I stream past. But the worst is always encountering Dogman in the morning on the streets. So if I see him and his ravenous beast on my running path, I try to take an alternate route. I run earlier in the morning in hopes to avoid Dogman. So far my efforts have been mostly successful. Between Genki grandmothers and savage beasts, you never know what awaits you on the Japanese streets at 5am. These last two months I've been gearing up for summer events. I decided to give the local Yosekoi team another shot and have been attending practices three times a week. In early July, the Aquathon will be held in Kuroshio, so I will have to compete against Japanese racers in a swimming and running event. 
We will be swimming 1.5 kilometers and running 10 kilometers, both of which I hope I have the stamina to do. But as always, there are time limits that adds some pressure to the event. With Yosekoi dance practices, running, swimming, going to the gym, working a full-time job, my days have been quite busy this month and quite full. Getting a road trip on a Saturday or Sunday morning is about the best I can manage for traveling. This means my recent exploration adventures have been mostly small. But for the sake of exploration and bold Basan footage, I've done a little bit. I've been designing posters and graphics like a mad illustrator for the Kochi Ajet and Bold Basan. It feels good to be keeping busy and updating our graphics to make it look good and fresh. And I feel a sense of pride when Jets join the Kochi Ajet community and things look nice, like someone cares about the job being done. Part of my philosophy when making an event is to make a nice poster for it. It doesn't just convey information to the people attending, but also shows that somebody is willing to put in the time and effort to make the event fun and meaningful. It shows I care, and I'm willing to take the time and effort to make it cool. That's all for now. Take care, and be bold.